It was actually my father who, after one year on quite unsuccessful trying to play violin, decided to send me to, to the ballet school in um, my hometown uh, Gdańsk. It's, it's north, of, north of Poland, dancing. Called. So I went there. Uh, I was uh, not very convinced at first, you know, because it was very a lot of um, slow exercise. Exercise is very, very difficult for, for a small child. I think after six months, I really started uh, enjoying this, As, especially I must say character dance, not not so much ballet because it was very, very slow process and. But I love character dance and uh, actually I love it until now. Somewhere there in the school I saw the video, I mean video, there was no video, it was uh, uh, on TV. I saw this uh, Swan Lake by Rudolf Nureyev with him dancing and I thought that he is just unreal, that it's impossible to dance so clean. Later on I went to Łódź, we have the Biennale de la Danse there, so every two years we have uh, a, a festival. And I remember I saw uh, the Dutch National Ballet. And I saw the piece uh, called uh, The Monument for the Dead Boy by Rudy Van Dancing. You know, Rudy Van Dancing, I think I can um, say, so he became my mentor at one point, you know. He was not such a long time um, my director at the Dutch National Ballet, uh, maybe five years, but I, I somehow I felt associated with him somehow. And the, the, this uh, ballet, the monument for the dead boy, it, it made a huge impression of me. That that um, uh, Rudy, it was very personal. It is very personal ballet. He talks about his homosexuality and the the the, the family problems. And but it was done then for me. It was done the the very um, um, you know. Um, it's not subtle at all, but it was very moving for me yeah, that it's, you can talk about such a serious problems uh, with the language of dance. And, you know, because of course we, I saw the ballets talking about uh, politics, for instance, in Poland, but it, they were propaganda ballets. And I, we always, I always uh, told that it's very banal, very vulgar in the way, yeah, uh, the guys with the red flags. and. So, um, you know, it was, but this was completely, it was, it was about uh, uh, life, his life, and it was somehow very moving, very true, and um, it was one, the ballet which, you know, made a huge impression on me then, yeah. Um, and th the same case is with Swadepka, you know, with Lenos. It was choreographed by Bronisława Nizinska, who, uh, who, who was Polish. <laughs> The most difficult thing is, uh, musically, it's very difficult to count. As far as the choreography, the one easy part for the ballet master, I think, is the fact that, for the most part, they are all, especially in the, the last movement, the last tableau, as she called it, uh, they all do the same thing, more or less, the same steps. You don't have every person in the court doing something different, like a, a lot of ballets do. But the counting is very difficult, and, and it's not a, a usual orchestration. It's, it's four pianos, percussion instruments, four solo singers, and chorus. And uh, uh, no strings or no melody, and they just virtually have to count almost every phrase and every uh, uh, measure of the whole score. The Holland still is uh, like a mecca for dance, really, with the da in the Dance Theater, which I admire as well very much. The head National Ballet, the Dutch National Ballet with three choreographers, so Rudy Van Dancing, three Mr. Van, 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 uh, Van Dancing, Van Manen and Van Schaik. And I met Maria Aradi, she was ballet mistress there, and I say, I would like to do an audition, you know. I, I speak probably some very bad English worse than now. Well, she said, there's no class, we, it's a free day for the company, yeah. I said, okay. Uh, but she said, go upstairs and talk to the office. And I went to the office and, you know, Saturday, so it's like empty. And I see that somebody sitting there in the office. And I recognize Rudy Van Dancing because I saw him in Poland a few years ago. I look and I said, good morning. <laughs> and he looked at it, he had a, a striking blue eyes, Rudy, you know, and he was really with this smile. He's on the picture there, but uh, yeah. Um, so he said, 
I, I tried to talk to him and he said, where are you from? You know, probably heavy accent, his European heavy accent. I said, well, um, I would like to do audition. And um, maybe uh, I started to speak with him in French, you know, because he, what language do you speak? I said French and he was fluent, of course. So we started to speak and he said, where are you from? And I said, I'm from Poland. And he had a, a, a weak spot for the people from the East, you know. So he asked me, w w where from in Poland? I said, I'm from Gdańsk. And he said, I'm Van Dancing. You know, but Gdańsk is dancing, yes? I'm Van Dancing, I'm Van Dancing, yeah? And what do you want? I said, well, I wanted to audition. Okay, we don't have class, but tomorrow there is a, 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 a class with the Dance Academy. It was a bit different now. And you can take class. My assistant, uh, Hannah Irians, will be giving the class. So, you know. So I did the class and he, he took me to the company. I did um, a few pieces for the workshop, company workshop. That, that's how I started choreographing. And you know, the f my first piece with the music of Pink Floyd um, uh, from the album called The Final Cut. And it was called Games. And it was, it was quite honest. It, it was, you know, for me, it was always very striking that in the East, when I you know, lived here, we were always, you know, the propaganda was always telling us how bad it is in the West. And, uh, and there I felt a bit opposite, you know. So, and it was a little bit about this, about the, the, the big propaganda. Of course, Rudy loved it because, you know, it's the subject it was very close to him. And um, yeah, it was my first, first piece for, for, for the workshop. It was a huge surprise that when I went to the studio, it was creative company, Dutch, Dutch National Ballet, the dancers were very open creative. So the biggest surprise that when I actually I started Corona, that it was not, I was not alone, you know, that I don't have to like, they were taking part in creation, you know, I was working already in the company, so I knew that the people are creative, but as choreographer, you know, I was so, I wanted to choreograph, but I, by, only by this thought, I was intimidated. <laughs> But I, I did it, you know, and, uh, and the dancers were great. I, I, the feeling, you know, which actually I carry with my, uh, myself un until now with me, that, you know, that um, when, when I work on a piece with the dancers and, you know, um, of course, especially when it works, <laughs> that I feel over, you know, overwhelmed, but with the gratitude, you know, and, and it's, uh, I oft, often say, because it's very dangerous feeling, you know, it's like, it's, on, it's bothering love, actually, you know, a fascination, it's, it's, it's quite, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's dangerous, you know, it's too, almost too emotional. Uh, you know, I'm not like cold calculated, but... <laughs> So I, I, when it were, when it work, when it doesn't work, it's different. You know, it's um, I feel guilty. You know, and because there are some pieces which you know, it's not always a, a story of success or you know, uh, fulfillment. Sometimes it doesn't work. It just it's it's you know it's it's many many elements uh, which uh, which are included in this process. You know, I remember when I work in Amsterdam later on my first full length ballet which was to, called Kurweil and it's, it was the, the piece which um, it was not the, the you know biographical about Kurt Weil, but was rather about his music the time he composed this music and how was he, how he was changing and you know it, it was like a, a like a trip traveling with the the, the music of Kurt Weil. And I think it doesn't work, you know, like, like the before the general, you know, I thought it's, it's, it's just a failure. I was so depressed, but, you know, we went with um, my, uh, like, long, long time collaborator, lighting designer, Bert Dahlhausen, to eat something and to Italian restaurant in front of the theater. I ordered some pasta. I just didn't eat, I think, one, <laughs> one bit. I was I just couldn't, you know. When I was meeting the dancers, you know, I was like, uh, I was like going, <laughs> like, 
I wanted to hide. And I remember I was surprised. I was like, hi, Christoph, how, how are you doing? You know, like normal, you know? So I was like very surprised by this. And then Gennaro came and, and it was like, wow, you know, the people were screaming after the, I was, uh, are they okay? You know, <laughs> it's like, it was for me some, sometimes it's difficult to judge on work as well, yeah. ballet director of the, of the major Polish company and I think I, I think one of the major U European companies I mean it's a big company and I also have obligations yeah now as a choreographer when I work in in, um, in Holland I didn't have such obligations like what I what do I do with the company uh, how many dancers are dancing and so at one point the Swan Lake was um, was a step when I think I, I sort of felt I want and I should take. And, uh, you know, when I was with um, the company, we were in St. Petersburg um, with another project. And with my deputy director, who is also um, a historian and he loves the history of uh, dance, uh, we visited uh, the villa of Matilda Krzyzynska, yeah, you know, Matilda Krzyzynska, she was also Polish. Yeah, that no many people know, but uh, she was Polish. Her father was very, very well known uh, dancer specializing in mazurka. M mazurka comes from Mazur, the Polish national dance. We wanted to keep the, um, the parts which are jewels and which are preserved. The Swan Lake, it's, it has this, my Swan Lake has this different twist and I thought it would be good for the Polish, uh, Polish pub public. Of course, there, it was not without controversies, I mean, when we premiered this, that why, uh, why to change, but we didn't change this, uh, this w white act and also the black swan padded there. But the rest is different. The second act, which is like, uh, in the, we call it maneuvers, the scene when the military are exercising and the, between them is uh, the, the, our prince. We call him Niki, who became later Nicholas, the, the last Tsar of Russia. And uh, I think this, this, and in this scene we have boys dances, you know, so and they enjoy it very much and the public likes this, this also this masculine uh, dance. And then we have white act, which is uh, super feminine and, uh, you know, very, very beautiful. I think it's a jewel of dance um, in the history of dance. You know, I think this rom this this uh, affair, let's say, between um, Nikki and Matilda, it was also something something very strong. He, of course, when he 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 had this uh, also his dream about Alex, who became his wife later. But it was it was not a huge royal family, so maybe it was not the best match at first for for Alexander, the the father of of Nikki. Anyway, we used these elements and we, we did uh, our swan like a bit different. We have to take under consideration this, the, the, the musical side. Yeah? It's, it's the, for the audience it should be not only visual but it's also uh, what they hear. And, uh, Jack 
Tanto is my piece. It's uh, it's composed from two Stravinsky pieces. The, the first is this song uh, composed to, to do, do the poem by Dylan Thomas. What happened that it's uh, Stravinsky is supposed to work with Dylan Thomas on the opera, and Dylan Thomas came to New York and he suddenly passed away in New York. And of course Stravinsky was very upset and he uh, did this poem was written, uh, Dylan Thomas wrote this poem when his father was ill and he was basically dying. Yeah? So the, the Stravinsky used this text and he wrote um, a song, which uh, it was in the 50s, so it was the, this late Stravinsky period when he was uh, writing not, not so, the, the music is quite rough, yeah? he was always rejecting Schoenberg's music, this 12-note 12, uh, 12 system, but this is close to Schoenberg, I think. So it's rough with this beautiful text, and I think it gives something very, very special, un unique. Uh, so this is the first part of, of the ballet, and the second is a uh, very early Stravinsky piece. Yeah? So f from his symphony, only one part, Largo, uh, and it is more like, let's, I don't know if I can say, but like neo-romantic style, you know, so it's quite tonal and uh, round. And I wanted to have this, this effect of the two contrasting pieces, because the, the, the piece, the text of Dylan Thomas and the, that uh, sort of my, my personal thoughts then, it was about, about uh, something which is uh, fading or passing time and um, also about the family, about being together, about, um, I don't know, supporting each other. It's fairly, um, I don't know if I can, I don't like to actually, if we talk about dance, to say, but it's fairly abstract. Uh, it's for two uh, women and two and three men, but they don't, they only cross, they don't, they don't, they are, they don't live in the same world, let's say, in times.